So what we're going to do today, we're going to look at some birds, we're going to look at some common birds, but we're going to look at birds from the point of view of us being in isolation because of this coronavirus. So we're going to go through a few things that will enable you to pick out the six common birds that you're going to find in your garden. But before we do this, the first thing that I want you to do is have a look out the window and have a listen for a couple of minutes. Because a lot of the birds we can identify by the calls, we don't actually even need to see them. But that's a little bit tricky. So at the minute out here, I can hear a great tip. It's obviously just stop now. I can hear the chattering of sparrows. And in the background, that deep fluty sound which I'll play you in a minute or two, is a blackbird. So I'm going to start off, as I say, with some of the commoner birds. And because we've not got access to the, to the garden, because we've not got fantastic optical equipment, we haven't got binoculars, we've not got big lenses on cameras, I'm going to use some books to actually show you what we're looking for. So, one of the first things that we're going to look for um, one that I think you'll know anyway um, is the robin. So everybody knows the robin. If you want to come in a bit closer and have a focus in on this page, come closer. Okay, so the biggest thing about the robin, which we all know, robin red breast, it has this fantastic red breast. It's out there at the minute, it's singing at the minute, and the song of the robin I always say is a little bit like it's been put under water. It's not a very insistent call, it's not a kind of striding call. The wren sounds like it's got a, a PA system behind it, sounds like the Nebworth Rock Festival. Really, really, really loud. At the minute, as, as well as all the birds out here, they've been territorial because they're looking at nesting and they're looking at, at kind of finding male, uh, at mate, sorry. So you will see a lot of these about, and they're like little clockwork birds. They'll come in, they'll flirt the tail, but then they'll move very kind of jerkily. So this is the robin. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play you the song of the robin, if you just bear with me a minute. Because we're using all kinds of uh, weird and wonderful technology here today. So just bear with me. The robin is a thing called a chat. Um, there's various chats throughout the world. The robin is quite ubiquitous. You find it throughout Europe. I'm going to play you the song now of the robin. Quite chippy. Can it's a bit kind of wishy-washy, not fantastically loud. Yeah. The other thing that you will hear it do is giving its alarm call. So if a predator came in, something like a sparrow hawk that we saw the other day, you'd hear this. So that's another one to look out for. Now at the minute. Robins are really, really easy to do because they're big, they're bold, they're boisterous, they're looking at territories and what they're doing is they're in fighting mode. So sometimes you'll see them actually fighting, hitting each other, rolling over in the dust. So Robin will be the one that you will probably see. It's a medium sized bird and it's got the wonderful red breast to it. Can't really tell between the sexes, so male Robins and female Robins, it's a little bit tricky to tell. Really good bird watchers can tell. But for this particular thing, all you need to do, remember, big eye, brown back, and the red on the breast. If you move on to the next one, that's our first one done. I'm going to go up a little bit in size for this one. And we're going to look at one of the thrushes. What we're going to look at is the blackbird. Okay, so blackbird, fantastic, does what it says on the tin, it's a bird and it's black. Fantastic, isn't it great? Hang on a minute, there's a brown one. Okay, so the brown birds are the females or the juveniles. 
Okay, we have a little bit of difference between the robins. We have robins that stay here in the UK all the time, but in the winter time we have Scandinavian birds that come over and they have a really, really deep yellow beak. The thing to think about with the robin, okay, is, and you'll see them within the gardens, when they come in, they always give away what they are because as they come in, it's almost like they're unbalanced and they'll flick the tail, maybe once, maybe twice, just to balance themselves up. And at the minute, these are taking over the underneath of our bird feeders. Okay, sometimes at the right time, they'll feed on berries, but they'll feed on pretty much anything really, pretty ubiquitous. If you want to get them to feed to you, one of the things that they don't really like, if you've got some, are grapes. Okay, so if you get a couple of grapes, put it out somewhere where, the, where they can see it, they'll come in and they'll feed on it. Again, this is a, a species that you find throughout Europe and it's a very, very common one. And it's, it's a lovely sleek black bird, really, really good. So that's our number two. Okay, our number two is the black bird. If you wanna get a bit more of a close up and I will see if I can find you the Song of the Blackbird. Now, the Song of the Blackbird is absolutely fantastic. It's really, really good. It has a real tonal quality to it. Um, what I mean by tonal is it's almost as though it's playing an instrument. It's really, really good. Like it was playing a flute. And you'll hear this, actually, one of the best times to hear this is later on tonight, just as it's going dark. You, you will hear this bird calling. So here's the blackbird. Really deep, quite sonorous, carries a long way. So that is the blackbird. Okay, let's crack on. Let's do another one. Right, I'm going to introduce you to the blue tit and the great tit. Stop sniggering at the back. The blue tit is smaller, carries a lot of blue on it. Okay, it's a fantastic acrobatic little thing. Sometimes it comes into the feeders and it'll hang completely upside down. Wonderful little bird, lots and lots of yellow on it at the front. And if you see it in flight, you will always see the blues of it. But if you look in comparison with the great tit, this one, in terms of the differences, we're talking about the size of the bird. The other thing is, when it comes to the bird tables, the great tit is a little bit more formal because it wears a tie. Okay, it's got a big white cheek, it's got a tie on it, and the male birds have a great big wide tie. Okay, the bird that we can hear outside now, that piping, that's called a teacher teacher call in some bird books. So we can hear that there's one out. That's it now, if you can hear it. The blue tit is quite a, a different call. The blue tit has various calls as well, different calls. So it can be um, something like. Um, I'm having a little bit of trouble with the app here. It can be something like a churring kind of call. It's almost like a scolding call. And all of these birds don't forget a nesting. So the thing now is you need to catch them before they actually get nesting and they sit on the nest. So the quicker you can do this, the better really. You can hear them, but a lot of the time you're not going to be able to see them. The other thing is if you've got a box up, you will probably get blue tits and great tits going in. We've got a box up on the house here and we've had great tits coming in. So these are the two commoner ones uh, of the tit family. The blue tit has obviously got this wonderful blue bonnet, whereas the great tit is much more uniform, much blacker. Okay, a good bit bigger. Well, I mean, if the great tit comes into the feeders, the blue tits and the other things will move away because he can be quite big. And, and as I say, quite, uh, although they, they, they like to be with other things in flocks in the winter time, at the springtime, like we're in now, they do try to isolate themselves from it. So again, if you want to get a um, close-up of this one, 
So we'll do the, the blue tip first. Okay, and then we'll go across to the grey tip. Okay, should we see if we can find the calls? Okay, uh, going down on the list. Now, where have they put those? Bear with me a minute. It's great, this technology, isn't it? Dum de dum de dum de dum dum de dum de dum. Ah, got you. Right, okay. So, first one I'm going to play you, the first one that I looked at, the Blue tip, these are typical calls of the blue tip. Hear that churring quality? There we go. Very, very typical. That's another phase that it does quite a bit. Let's move on to the great tip. As I say, this is a bigger bird, will kind of displace other birds. This is the typical song, uh, sorry, the, the typical pinking call as we call it. Some other calls. Much deeper. Choo, choo. Yeah. Okay, great stuff. So that's four we've got. So we've done Robin, we've done Blackbird, we've done the Blue Tip, we've done the Great Tip. Right, let's have a look at a few birds that used to be very, very common but are now coming into decline. You're going to be able to see them and you will have heard of both of them. But believe you me, when I was a bird watcher, when I was started when I was 15, which is a good long time ago, we used to get lots and lots of these in the bridge in witness uh, going across the run column was one of the best places to see them. This of course is the starling. So let's have a look at the starling. The starling is a medium sized very garrulous bird. By garrulous what that actually means is they hang about in flocks and these are the things that do these wonderful murmurations that people are always talking about. Now when they fly they're incredible. They like little arrows. Can you see in this illustration here? It's like someone has got arrowheads and just pinged them across. And when you see thousands and thousands of these birds all moving at one, it's a real spectacle. You think that it's quite drab a starling until you get a really good view of it. And when you do get a good view of it, you will see all the kind of shimmering myriad kind of um, tones and bits of coloration in them. It's a cracking bird. It's really, really good. But I've got to say, we don't see as many of them. And actually, the starling has not only gone into national decline in the UK, but it's gone into international decline. Even in some places where it was introduced as a species. So there's something that we're doing that isn't sitting right with the starlings. One of the things that you would always find on your school playing fields are starlings coming in to look in the lawn. The starlings are very much um, a lawn species. The things that they like to eat are just under the surface of the grass. One of the amazing things about the starling actually is when it opens its beak, its eyes can see right in the middle. So it's almost got binocular vision. Not many birds have that because obviously the birds are on either side of the head and they don't see like we do. Uh, some of the raptors are better placed and the owls, of course, because of evolution, have brought the eyes around and together so they can use that binocular vision. The starling, again, is a noisy bird. Um, it's really, really funny because when you are watching starlings, if you're watching starlings prior to them going into a roost, it's funny because what will happen is they will... Um, actually completely stop. They'll go for, for a couple of minutes, they'll chitter chatter about and then eventually the whole of the chattering will stop. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play you some starling calls. Okay, some typical songs. Okay, going into a winter roost. 
sure you have heard that winter's nights when they, when they come out. The other wonderful thing about Stalins, of course, is they mimic songs. So they'll do car alarms, they'll do all kinds of things, really. Your mobile phone call. And that one there was doing a blackbird call. So that, again, pretty spectacular, really. Okay, before my neighbours come across, because I can hear them in the background, I'm going to do you uh, the final one. Not the golden oriole, not the nutcracker, because they're proper specialist birds. But the house sparrow, so the humble sparrow. Let's have a close up of that one. Okay, this is a winter bird. In the summer, this male would have fantastic a black cap, very, very light on the cheek, wonderful, wonderful chestnutty um, chestnut coloration, and that white line on the scapulars. The scapulars are, are the, the kind of highly chiseled um, feathers on the back of this bird. It's got this C-shaped comma mark and it's got the darkness underneath and at the top. The male sparrow, in, as in a lot of birds, is the most showy because he displays. Now the thing about starlings again, lots and lots of starlings will flock together until this time. Okay, this time of the year is when they actually start to purr up, so they're not as, as, as garrulous, to use that word again. They're, they're not as prone to getting flocks, but you can hear them chipping about. You'll find them in parklands, you'll find them in your back gardens. They used to be a real bird uh, of, of urban places, so where we live. But unfortunately, again, international decline. Passer domesticus was a pan-global species. And what I mean by pan-global is it occurs right through the world. But this thing, unfortunately, is now starting to go into decline. <coughs> Excuse me. The other thing that we've got, and we have some locally, is the tree sparrow, which is its relative. So don't worry about that. Don't need you to identify that. Concentrate on the house sparrow. But the difference is it has a little box-shaped mark on it, on its cheek. Okay? Within the winter. Right, let's do the calls, okay? See that chipping? That kind of chip that they do? Sometimes do that one as well. That's a lot of them together. Okay. So we've done six birds, six birds that are really, really easy. So we're going to go back through them again, and I'm going to tell you what you need to look out for. Okay, Robin, dead common. Lots and lots of them about at the minute. The males are fighting. There's loads of competition going on. They're looking to, to nest, so they've got that fantastic red breast. Uh, the Robin red breast was a, was a, a terminology from the, the Egypt, Egyptians. No, surely not. The, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not Victorians, people, older people. Um, so, yeah, you've got the robin, you've got the robin chipping, the watery kind of song with it. Next thing you got was the blackbird. So the blackbird comes in completely black, yellowing bill, flips its tail, yeah. We then did great tip and blue tip. So the blue tip was the smaller one, the blue cap on the head, can hang upside down. The bigger one was the great tip. Okay, so the great tip does the teacher, teacher, teacher call. And if you are an experienced bird watcher and you can't identify in a woodland the birds that are making the call, nine times out of ten it will be a great tip because they have a vast range of, of repertoire. Okay, the last two were the common ones that are no longer common. So we've got the house sparrow, the chipping house sparrow, yeah? Okay, wonderful. The males, very, very kind of dapper. Uh, black underneath the chin, black on the cap, the C-shaped mark, very, very brown. And the last thing we've got, which we used to have loads of, the starling. So the starling is very, very pointed. I said it looked a little bit like arrowheads. We have these wonderful murmurations where they're doing all these swirly kind of things in the winter with the big winter flocks when there's thousands and thousands. As it stands now, we've got them purring up. So they'll be in ones or twos, maybe even fours or fives but they will be looking to breed. So that's your six common birds, six common birds that you can find in the garden. Good luck with it. And the most important thing is have fun with it. Okay, thanks for listening.